Hi, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cracking edition of The Matt Brown Show. This is the Secrets of Fail series where we are talking to founders, entrepreneurs, and CEOs all about their epic business blunders. And with us uh, in the hot seat today is Kevin Callahan. He is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Uniblock.dev. If you are interested, Kev, welcome to the show, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. Cool, buddy. Well, look, you know what's coming, so let's get on with it, shall we? Uh, the elevator pitch. What exactly are you guys up to over there at Uniblock? Absolutely. So we are building the world's first unified API for Web3. And what that means is we're working with all the best players in the, in the space to make sure that developers have access to you know hundreds of different endpoints from all the best players, from Alchemy to Third Web, Quick Node, Parsec, and, and others. So yeah, that's what we're up to. Thank you. So what's the backstory to this whole story? I mean, were you always in sort of blockchain crypto or like what was the spark or the genesis, uh, you know, moment for this business? Yeah, I, you know, for me personally, I was really interested. I'm really interested in finance. I was really interested in, in Web3 for a number of years. So I was at Twitter before and Coinbase after that. And then I met my co-founder, David, who was on kind of a similar trajectory. He's our CTO and he's built a bunch of really cool things as well. And we're thinking about, you know, you know, what is a leading indicator for what people will be using? Uh, and it's really what developers are working on. And we think there's, a, you know, a lot of road to be uh, driven with regards to what developers have access to. But we don't want to build it ourselves. What we want is to build it with the best people doing it. So there are dozens, if not hundreds, of really great companies. And so we want to partner with every single one of them. Yeah, someone has to tell me tell me when uh, Web three actually arrives, because <laughs> like yeah, you let me know. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's let's keep this conversation going because it's a it's a fascinating space. It's just like I covered crypto, dude, like back in twenty nineteen. Uh, those who've been following the show will know um, when it first ran, like the first first bull run when it went to like nineteen thousand. Obviously, we had a few since then. And I was selling out live shows all across the country. I was the most famous I'd ever been. And it was all through crypto and whatever. And I've been following it loosely, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just like, but when? When are we getting there? When's the narrative really going to change, you know, from like crypto trading to utility and, and tokens and all this kind of stuff? NFTs kind of did that. And then that all fell off a ship or off a cliff. I don't know. Um, so it's, it's like it's coming, you know, and I just, I just don't yeah. feel like it's, it's quite here yet. No, it's really early. And actually, if I could just um, yeah. address that. So when I when I think about what we're doing in Web3, it really does remind me of kind of like the 80s and 90s and uh, the internet. So again, if we were if we were sitting at a table having beers and talking about what our mental model of the internet is in like 1991, we would probably say it was electronic mail. And that's your entire view of the internet. And then we would come back two or three years later and it would be you know electronic mail and then maybe an electronic library. And you go back like five years later and it's like, oh, you can actually do some commerce uh, and you can do some things. And what was happening was across every couple of years, different functions were being built, different products were being built and our mental model was expanding. And, you know, clearly then we start having access to the internet. We have started to have access to our computers at home rather than necessarily at school or work. And then the features that were able to be utilized by us as, as um, users were starting to expand. And so that brought us up to 2005, 2010, social networks, you know, being able to order a phone on your, uh, order a uh, car from your phone, start to become exciting. Um, you know, and now we've got today where you can kind of do everything you want from your phone. <clears throat> but if we were sitting at the bar in 1991 and saying, hey, you know, we're gonna have a phone in our pocket, we'll be able to order some stranger to come and, you know, pick us up in their car and drive us to our, you know, Airbnb, we would never have thought that. I think we're really early here in Web3 where our mental model, we started using the word crypto at the beginning. So think people think about store of value, immediate exchange, and then we started adding blockchain. So there's other things you can do with the blockchain technology. And now it's expanding to Web3. So that mental model is expanding and we're, we're changing what we're able to do, um, but it's still really, really early. We're in probably like 1992 of the internet. Yeah, well, <clears throat> But that can change, dude. I, I think this is a whole conversation for another. I actually have a, a series called Crypto Kung Fu, which I, I might resurrect. And when, when, uh, when I, if and when I do, I'll definitely <laughs> give you a shot along with my other crypto buddies. Cause like, what the fuck's actually going on now? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> we do don't it. have time Anytime. for that. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. 
You keen? No, anytime. Okay, great, great. Well, we don't unfortunately have time to do double click on this whole world, but uh, we need to get on with the meat and the potatoes of this series. So, um, so Kev, what is your epic story of fail for our audience around the world today? I think it's really a matter of getting ideas off the ground and just raising money and, and trying to do things properly. So uh, when we were talking earlier, I was thinking of all the ways I failed and I failed, you know, more often than I'd like to admit, uh, and then trying to learn. But I think, you know, when I was thinking about something that would be topical for the, the, the listeners and the viewers today, it really is, you know, you as an entrepreneur have an idea and then you're trying to get that idea off the ground. And for me, I had a couple of like really seminal moments where I thought, okay, this is a really great idea. And I talked to people, I tried to get people involved and I wasn't able to do it. Um, and you know, those particular ideas under the right circumstances, people have now, you know, been able to exit for hundreds of millions of dollars on those like things that I wasn't able to do. And so when Uniblock came along, it was like, okay, how do I learn from all those fails? And how do I just actually get this going? So yeah, it's a story of, of that, if that makes sense. Uh -huh, it does. So, I mean, <clears throat> what actually happened? I mean, have you guys raised money? And it's kind of, it's like, how, what's the right way to do these things? I actually don't know. I suppose it's like in the startup world, it's kind of like there's this, this the Silicon Valley narrative, isn't it? It's kind of like, well, you have to get to MVP, you raise some pre-seed pre money, and then, you, and then you go on the Silicon train. You know what I mean? Um, and that's the only path. Like I was chatting to the CEO of Chess.com recently, um, and mm -hmm. like loads of VCs were like, never going to scale, blah, blah, like, you know, don't bother. And he couldn't actually raise money where his friends could. Um, and, uh, and now he has 170 million monthly users. So it's like, fuck yeah. you, you know. So I guess yeah. the thing for me, I'm curious to know, like, wh what actually happened with you specifically? Like, wh what's actually transpired? Yeah, you know, it's funny. So that's happened here at Uniblock. Uh, we started raising money uh, during a time when it's really hard to raise money over the last like six months or so. And frankly, I had 70 calls before we got our first yes. So imagine having, you know, whatever it is, 69 calls. And like, you're, you're thinking, am I, am I an idiot? Like, is this a bad idea? Like, what are we doing wrong? And I think, you know, when I look back at my, my entrepreneurial journey before now, I would have not necessarily given up, but I wouldn't have persevered in the way we did this time. And so it took 70 calls to get our first yes, and it was the smallest check. And then it took probably another 30 or four calls, 30 or 40 calls to, to close that round. So, you know, um, that's, I think, what I want to impart on the, on the viewers is that um, you really do have to have like a hundred different calls right now, a hundred different no's in order to actually get to that. Yes. It's, it's not, it's not as easy as you might think. No, it's not. So Kev, when you think about that whole experience, what's the kind of key lesson that you now take forward with you into the uni block business? Yeah, I think first off it's learning from each call. Um, you don't want to necessarily overcorrect um, because then you're just kind of wonky, but like, okay, my pitch isn't landing. Um, they're asking for these things I didn't know existed. Uh, I have to make sure I have these bits of information. I have to have this thing set up and just getting better because the first five or 10, you know, interactions, you really don't know what you're doing and uh, it kind of shows. And then eventually you're like, okay, the pitch is getting, you know, making sense a little more. My valuation, you're doing price discovery for your valuation. You're doing price discovery for how much you want to raise. You're just trying to understand a lot. So I would say, first off, know that you're going to be doing dozens and dozens of calls to get dozens and dozens of no's, or frankly, like people just ghosting you and then learning and getting better for each one. Uh, and then, yeah, just, you know, when I, when we were in the middle of it, I was probably on my 50 or 60th call and I reached out to a friend. I'm like, I think I'm an idiot. Like I literally can't get a yes. And the person <laughs> was like, no, you're, you're going through the muck. Like this is literally the suck in the muck that you got to keep pushing through. So. That's why I want to talk about the story because I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs now and they're like, oh, I've talked to three VCs or five VCs and they didn't really like it. I'm like, dude, you got to talk to 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're not going to get a yes on three. And that was the mistake I was making earlier in my career in my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. It's character building, man. I think, but it, you know, every like uh, Airbnb, there's that whole story where they actually show mm -hmm. emails where yep. like you know, all the biggest funds were like, no, no, no. No one's going to rent out their room in their house and have strangers in there. 
uh, Peloton, I think he ha- he had 400 rejections before mm-hmm. he got a yes, yeah. you know, or something crazy like that. That's also. exactly it. Yeah, but you're right. And I think it is that it is that perspective, right? Like people need to, well, especially, especially the youngsters, like I'm an old man now, I'm like 44. But especially like, and I've done 14, you know, startups over the last 25 years, multiple exits, like I figured out my shit a long time ago. And, but when yeah. I was younger, which I was also the same, like, oh, so it's not working out and you're crying about it. Well, fucking get over it. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's, yeah. it's the youngsters who are like, oh, I've only spoke to three and, and they all said no. It's like, no, dude, like you said, it's like, no, you need to be doing three. Ha- well, basically, if it was 3,000 and you really cared about your, 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 what you were going to contribute to the world and build for the world, then you would, it wouldn't matter if it was 30 or 300 or three. It'd just be, just be a case of when, you know? So it that's, is mindset. That's exactly it. It's totally mindset. That's exactly it. Yeah. I think it's mindset. I think getting out of bed every day and getting, you know, again, we'll call them no's, but like most of them weren't even no's. So people just like, you know, didn't respond. Um, and, but just knowing that's normal, right? Like it wasn't, I don't want to say that when I was younger that I was lazy or I wasn't willing to put in the work. I just didn't realize that that's what was I, I was supposed to do. You know, it didn't occur to me that like, oh, I'm not supposed to just talk to these, you know, five VCs or these, you know, people like I got to keep going until it works out. So, yeah, it's just a, it's a mental shift for me personally. And I think mm-hmm. right now we've gone off this uh, world where raising money was relatively easy. Like I you know, saw a lot of friends leave Coinbase and raise, you know, $10 million uh, on a handkerchief. And it's, it's a lot different now. And I think some people still think it's that easy, but you really just have to realize that, you know, uh, you got to push through. And then people say like, how do you get a hold of a hundred? Well, you're like, well, looking them up on LinkedIn, asking for interactions and trying to message people on Twitter. And, you know, again, not knowing what to do, uh, I think is part of the issue. Mm. Yeah. That's bang on dude. Bang on. So Kev, if you could get in. And if you could get into the Matt Brown show time machine and kind of, you know, go back to yourself when you were getting all these no's called 39 or what have you, um, you know, wh- what advice would you give yourself or what would you do differently if anything and why? Uh, again, it's really a mental model shift where, Hey, you know, you thought you were going to do 10 calls and get a yes, and you're going to use that momentum. You just got to keep going to 10 because I think, you know, part of it is learning, right? Like you're not going to know in the past, like, Hey, this is, they're looking for this, or this is what your pitch sounds good at. And this is what you steer away from. And this is what your data room looks like. And this is how you set up your financials. So I, I, you know, if I could go back in time, I would just give myself all that information and maybe it wasn't 70 calls, maybe it was less, but I really think it's like, you know, know that you're going to be pushing through and you're going to get to over a hundred calls before you get anywhere close to feeling like you have traction. And, it's just going to continuously be like that going forward. Mm-hmm. So, Kev, what's your advice to <clears throat> other CEOs or entrepreneurs right now in terms of like, you know, the importance of failing in becoming successful? Yeah, I mean, so a decent amount of people that I'm speaking to have great ideas that they're passionate about. They have, um, you know, great resumes in some way, shape or form. And so, again, it's, it's literally just a, hey, like things are 10 times harder than they were or even a hundred times harder than they were. And some of the the playbook that you have read on, you know, YC or whatever, aren't really applicable right now. So you got to 10X that or like a hundred X that. So for example, um, part of what you see in the playbook is like, oh, you know, go and talk to a couple people, fail, and then, you know, have a stack rank of, okay, I want to get, you know, these are my three VCs I want to hit. So got to get them on the cap table. and. I don't know. Like, I think part of that might be the days might be a little over where you can be. So it's not really a, it's not really a, um, as friendly as that. I think you just got to go down and and try to get as much going as you can get as much excitement as you can and get the momentum going and just keep pushing through it. Dude, sage advice, brother. What about books, tools, and uh, resources that you recommend? Yeah, for me, again, it was having people with a positive attitude that can just like keep me and let me know, like that have gone, like that are a couple years ahead of me. I, I referenced my friend that, uh, you know, he's had a couple of startups, a couple of strikeouts, but it seems like he's on a great path now with, you know, he's raised some money, he's gone through YC. So really somebody you can just like talk to and be like, hey, like they're asking for this type of data room. What does that look like? Or they're asking for, um, you know, this type of 
uh, safe agreement. What does that mean? Um, there's just so much stuff like that I didn't know that even existed that, you know, hey, you can download safe agreements right off YC. And by the way, you can get them for outside the US or things you just don't know. So if you can find a couple of people that can help you and that would just like, you can just ask like kind of silly questions because you can spend hours on the internet, not even knowing what you don't know, or you can spend, you know, a short period of time with somebody that's gone through it a couple of years earlier than you. Very, very cool, brother. Well, look, um, that does conclude your time in the hot seat, Kev. Appreciate you, man, for lending your perspective. Um, and congrats, man, on persevering. You know, I really think that's Thank like you. eighty percent of the of success, man. It's just showing up every single day and taking pain. You know, <laughs> um, I, I think you're right I, on on that, Matt. Like, you know, honestly, like a lot of the things that you so the stories that we hear are kind of the exception to the rule. Like Airbnb is so different, although there were a whole bunch of things similar to them, or you know, Uber is like pretty different or whatever. But a lot of startups that do well aren't like some sort of crazy novel idea. They just push through and execute it. So for what it's worth, yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Well, look, um, congrats on all your success, even if it is uh, your young, young guy, young company, but doing a lot of things the right way. And I think that obviously bodes well for the future. So <clears throat> wishing you and the rest of the Uniblock team all the very best of the future, Kev. Thank you. Appreciate it. Everybody else, we'll see you again soon. Ciao.